How are we going guys? Uh, this video here is how to tie a pheasant tail. This is part of my classic Kiwi Flies series that I'm doing. And what you're going to need for this fly here is size, this is 70 denier, kind of a brown thread. Uh, don't get too fussy on the thread as long as it's kind of a dark colour is good, just don't go using orange or anything like that. And the thinner the better. Also peacock curl, as thin a copper wire as you have and pheasant tail. I'm tying this on a size A12 hook and I'd usually tie them on A14s or A16s but just for the sake of demonstration I think that larger is better. So start with a wrap there just bring that thread up just to before where the hook starts to bend. Take some of your pheasant tail. I usually go for about one, two, three, four. I usually go for about eight to 12 strands. Add a quick count there, that looks like the right amount. So just tie that in, nice and tight. One of the key things with a pheasant tail, and you'll find it in fly tying in general, is less thread wraps are generally better. With having less thread wraps, what you're able to have more space for other things, especially once you get down the head and you're tying things off down there. If you go crazy on the thread wraps down there, you end up with a massive bulky head that looks out of proportion with the fly. So always just do enough that's necessary to tie down whatever you're using. So now that I've tied that in, a lot of people here would cut that piece of pheasant tail off and then tie a new bit of pheasant tail. There's not really much point in that. Just bend it back and tightly bring that back to the start of the tail. Grab your copper and break off about a finger length strand or just, I usually make it pretty long, just makes the whole thing easier to work with. And tie that in about the length of the rest of the hook shank and bring that up to the same point of the pheasant tail as where the pheasant tail is. And now bring your thread back just beyond halfway. And always try to remember which way you wrap your pheasant tail because you're then going to be wrapping your copper the opposite way. Bring that around. And only do one layer, don't wrap and then wrap back over the same layer that you've done. And this part of the fly and the body of the fly thinner is definitely better. Now we've got that where we want it, just tie that off tightly. And given what's going to happen down here in this part of the fly, we can use a bit of thread, so make sure it's tied down tight. And then I'm just going to cover up a little bit more, just so my ratio of body to thorax is going to end up right. And now wrap your copper the opposite way to what you wrapped your pheasant tail. What that's going to do is that's just going to make the fly a lot more durable. If any of those pheasant tail fibers get nipped, they won't completely unravel. So now grab some more pheasant tail and cut off about the same amount of fibers as you did earlier for the tail. So now what you want to do is lie that down and have the thinner ends of your pheasant tail just under a hook shank's length beyond the eye of the hook. And tie that in. So bring that up to about where the pheasant tail stopped. 
now it's time for the peacock hill. You want to grab about five peacock hill fibers. Select ones that are fairly long so you've got plenty to work with. Now I just cut these off so they're all at equal lengths. And just tie those in nice and tight. And bring them up to where the pheasant tail was before. And you'll thread back down to the eye of the hook. I'll just spin them all together. Just wrap them around, creating really nice abdomen to your fly or thorax. One thing just to watch carefully is the amount of wraps I do. So I only did three wraps over that peacock hill and I quite often only actually do two. And then I'll bring that bit of pheasant tail over the peacock hill and tightly tie that down. It's quite important for this to be fairly secure, this part, before you cut it off. So I think I did five wraps around there. Now take your scissors and only cut the pheasant tail that you just brought over the top. So grab all those fibers, cut them off as close as you can. And I actually bring my peacock hill fibers just and point them up that way. A lot of people would cut them off now. I like to do the legs before I cut those. So now just bring those pheasant tail fibers up and hold them all solidly up there so that they're not going anywhere and plenty of wraps and start developing a bit of a head take your whip finish tool two three done and cut that off there so you break your head cement in there Now just get your pheasant, your peacock curl fibers one at a time, just work them out. The reason I do these like this is because it's the only way, the, when you cut these with scissors, it doesn't really cut them fully flush. So this is the best way to get them out without having a bit of a bushy part there. And there we go, so I've got one little stray leg coming up here. I don't concern too much about the symmetry of the legs. I sometimes actually like to have a bit of a circular hackle kind of look at the front. So if you are concerned about having symmetry and keeping your legs side by side, make sure you just bring them up either side. It's something I used to concern about, but then I found there was absolutely no difference and it's just important to have that extra little detail and gives the fly a bit of movement. But anyway, here we go. I'll try hold on my vice so I can show you what we've got. The pheasant tail is probably one of the oldest fly patterns that there are up there with the hair and copper. But it's a classic and it's one that you should always have in your fly box. Uh, actually today when I was fishing I saw a bit of a mayfly hatch going on. Uh, not enough to really get them taking much off the surface, but it showed a mayfly nymph, like a pheasant tail was probably the best way to go. Chucked one of those on and I caught a few fish on it. And hopefully this has been of use to you and you're able to tie some pheasant tails and go catch some fish. Cheers.